Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So my name is Amy and basically I've set up this channel just to show off my pets really. So um, I don't tend to keep run of the mill pets. I do have dogs, I do have cats, but um, I'm more into your mantids, um, your African land snails, your aquariums, I'm big into aquascaping. I'm not very really good at it. So this video is gonna be an orchid mantis basic care guide. Now there's various reasons why I wanted to get this out. I wanted to get this out a lot sooner, but it was ready to go on YouTube and everything and it all just completely messed up I've, yeah I've done this three times now so this is the final one so I'm gonna get this done tonight so thank you everyone who's been waiting especially on my Instagram for your patience and everything you know anyway there is a uh, quite an important reason why I'm getting this video out there's a lot of concern in the mantis community about um, impulse buying and this sudden surge in orchid mantis popularity so if you're not part of the mantis community if you've never owned a mantis before definitely don't disregard this video or anything because it's quite interesting interesting um, as to why this has happened but not only that um, if you are considering buying an orchid mantis or if you have actually impulse bought these because I know a lot of people have then no judgment or anything like this video is there just to help you out and steer you in the right direction so I have an Instagram account and I've not got a massive following or anything it's around about 4,000 if you've got any type of following and you're posting content that is gonna possibly influence other people then you need to be a bit more responsible which is why I'm trying to do this and educate those on if it's in the animal sector I educate them on the proper key so people are seeing a snapshot of my life on Instagram now I've got mantids like pictures of mantids on my face I'm holding my mantids and stuff and um, you know they're nice pictures and everything but there's literally a snapshot of my day with my pet is it's my memories and everything of my animal I like to do that some people might not like that but each to their own so yeah I think if I am gonna carry on doing that I want to just clarify a few things I want to make sure that if you're seeing these and you're looking at buying an orchid mantis or any type of mantis or any animal really then you're fully informed of what actually is entailed with looking after that animal okay so I'm gonna try and narrow this rant right down because I had a little bit of a rant on my other videos and I had to really chop it down Like I said, no judgment, nothing like that. I mean, maybe a little bit. Yeah, there's no malice or anything in anything I'm about to say. So I just want to give everyone the facts. Now, orchid mantids, um, quite rightly, beautiful and everything, have been thrust into the limelight lately. In the mantis community, they have seemed to have noticed that this is from TikTok. There are few very young kids on TikTok, and I don't mean this in, the ver in a disrespectful way, like I am in no way bashing kids looking after animals. I have an eight year old, she's absolutely fab at looking after my mantids, everything. So I'm not bashing kids looking after animals before anyone starts. I'm not gonna name these TikTokers or anything, cause I don't want like 17 million of their followers, subscribe, whatever they're called on TikTok. I don't want them jumping on and absolutely ripping it out to me. They're seeing their content and they're acting upon it and they're not educated about what they're seeing at all. So, like I said, I'm not gonna name these people, but there are these TikTokers that are posing with these animals. Um, and a lot of the time it's not even just posing, it's verging on animal neglect, animal abuse when they're like getting these animals really riled up and teasing them and everything just for a reaction, just for a video, which is absolutely disgusting. I said no judgment, but now I'm judging. And basically, yeah, they're using these animals as glorified living toys, which isn't great when they have no clue how to look after them themselves. But my biggest problem is that they're showing these animals off and they're not giving any insight to their care or um, how they should be properly looked after. Uh, some of their husbandry and everything is shocking. And I mean, they're keeping them in inadequate enclosures. Um, they're endangering their life. Some of them have made it to adulthood, which really surprises me, but that's a whole nother story. Out of all the different animal hobbies that I've been in, um, the invert hobby seems to be the friendliest and like 99% of people are there to help uh, without judgment, which is absolutely brilliant. Like you, that is what you want. But then you're obviously gonna get in any walk of life, any hobby, you're gonna get people like from one extreme to the other. I mean, you've got the people in the middle that are kind of your bog standard hobbyists and everything. They've probably had quite a few years experience and they're willing just to help. You know, they're not gonna stab you in the back. There's gonna be 20 of them jumping on you, like screaming in your face <laughs> on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. Um, they're gonna actually try and help and give you advice. But then you've got your other two extremes. So you've got your complete, you know, newbies in the hobby that haven't got a clue what they're doing, uh, which is fine, you know, they're not gonna know if they've just got into the hobby. But still, you know, they probably shouldn't have 
gone out and purchased an animal before doing their research. But then on the other side of the scale, I think most of you are gonna know exactly what I'm on about, especially if you've been involved in the reptile hobby. Like you cannot know any more than anyone else in the reptile hobby. Like you probably know this already. And if you day, day have an opinion or anything, you're gonna have 20 other people jumping on your back. Now, obviously you're gonna have your know-it-alls and everything. Um, it's fine if you know it all. I think the worst type are the ones that think they know it all. They chuck a few research articles in your face that a, they probably don't even understand themselves. Uh, B, probably just read the abstract and got a clue what they're on about. They're not peer reviewed articles. Um, I mean, not to sound like big headed or anything, but being a scientist, you know, I've gone through a few years, I've been able to read research articles. I mean, and not everyone can because they, they are quite hard to understand when you first get into it, you know. But I do love it when I have them thrown in my face and I'm like, you, you don't even understand the content yourself. You're making decisions on something that you don't even understand yourself. And you're trying to validate your point something that's not even validating your point is actually going completely against what you're saying but you've just misinterpreted the information and half the time they're picking up these these articles that they're just a load of rubbish anyway i do have fun picking them apart but i've, I've learned to keep my mouth shut lately anyway i've done my research uh trying to do it so that you don't have to and just convey it through you in a video um but yeah i wouldn't take my video and just use that like solely there's people with a lot more experience than me i'm not an expert by any means 99 percent of the people are just your normal bog standard hobbyists now those are the ones you want to gravitate more towards or just lurk on these facebook groups because i mean back when i was into reptiles i used to try and get involved but i stopped that pretty sharpish because honestly the people on on these groups back then were terrible and i've heard from a few people it's not changed a lot since but seriously i cannot stress how helpful facebook groups are you know you've got years and years and years of experienced people like and they're there right at your fingertips you know you've got a question you can ask and in these madness communities and in these invert communities like that is great they most of the people there are great but if this video and this care guide can like get through to even like one person this impulse bought an orchid mantis then like my work's done so i know a few of these like hardcore mantis keepers are pretty myth that all these newbies are coming over and taking our orchid mantids but we can't buy orchid mantids anymore like i think it's only a good thing that people are getting into the insect hobby or into the natural world and everything i just think just help them out but yeah there's a lot of people that have got their backs up about this and you know i feel like just saying to them you know when you think about it, you didn't come out of the womb, did you? This is my orchid mantis, I know everything about it. No, you did not come out like that. You had to get your first mantis, you had to learn it from everyone else, and you had to research it yourself. These people are in exactly the same position. Maybe a few years after you got into this hobby and suddenly became this expert, half of them aren't because you tend to find these know-it-all people. Um, they know half the facts, um, think they know absolutely everything. Whereas the people who are kind of a bit more calmed down and less judgmental and are willing to help out are the people who actually know a lot more. I think instead of being like these judgmental people that they're being, then just help the people out. You know, yeah, they, they, they've done wrong. They've impulse bought an animal without researching, without without even getting the enclosure to start with or food or anything. I've had quite a, a few messages like in general about, oh my God, I've just bought this mantis. What do I do? Why would you do that? Don't do that, seriously. And like, after watching this video, there is no excuse. You will not do that again, will you? No, couldn't even imagine bringing home any type of animal and not even having anything to put it in. Not nothing to feed it or know anything about it. Like that is the most terrifying thing like I could imagine. So yeah, I think it's best that anyone with any judgment or any opinions on it, like mean opinions, should just zip it for the sake of the animal and just help that person out because at the end of the day, it's not them that's suffering or anything, it's gonna be their animals that suffers. And if you are really passionate in this hobby, like the one thing you don't want is like an animal to suffer. So it's kind of twisted really. I, I don't see the point of being mean to someone. There's no point, just, just help them out. Okay, so that is most of my rant over. I tried to condense it down. So now I think it's just best that we just get into the guts of the video. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about housing, uh, feeding, uh, how to sex your mantis. That does not involve chucking on a bit of uh, Barry White in the background. Ah, uh, Don't be a child, you know exactly what I'm on about. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna be sexing our mantises and I'm gonna also mention a few miscellaneous different things um, that like the mantis community have brought up to me that they think that you should know before actually purchasing an orchid mantis. 
Okay, so if we start on housing then, so you can make this hobby as expensive as you want or as cheap as you want. Now, my enclosures, they can range from like extremely cheap, practically free, um, to, you know, your vivariums, uh, your glass vivariums and everything. Um, and it really doesn't matter as long as they're the right size um, and they're the right um, composition and everything for your mantis. Now, what I mean by that is that some mantids can't actually climb glass as this is an orchid mantis video. Um, there's gonna be a lot of things in here that will cross over with other mantids, but orchid mantids, they don't have a problem with climbing glass, whereas like other mantids such as like your wandering violin mantis or your devil flower mantids, um, they're not gonna be able to grip onto the sides of um, like a acrylic or a plastic or a glass enclosure. So as long as you've got the size and like the composition then of your enclosure right, then you should be good to go. Now, if I just turn this, I've got a few different examples over here. I don't know how good the lighting is obviously with these little strip lights and everything, but yeah, I've got like a range of different enclosures. Now, you, enclosures that you'd want for like a mantis that, other than an orchid mantis that wasn't able to climb up glass or anything would be something like one of these. Now, these are just your mesh enclosures. I use these for my um, philia, my leaf insects and everything. Um, so yeah, I haven't actually got a mantis in there. But uh, other than that, for your orchid mantis, you can go from something as cheap as a deli cup to start off with or a glass vivarium. Now, um, you need to base this on like the size of your mantis, the age of your mantis and everything. So they're going to be an in instar. So sometimes you'll see it written as like L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, usually up to around about L8. So they are just basically stages of which they've molted. Now, my orchid mantis when I had her was L5. Um, so she wasn't a small mantis or anything. So her enclosure was bigger than what you would give like a little nymph or something. The enclosure that she was in wouldn't have been adequate quite for um, when she was older. So if you get an orchid mantis and they're quite young and everything, like something like a deli cup might be okay. So something like this. Um, right now I've got an adult Malaysian flower in here. I don't know if you can see. So I can put an adult one of these in here because of the size and everything. Like that's fine, even though they're an adult, like they're a tiny, tiny species of mantis. But your orchid mantis, is definitely going to outgrow this pretty soon but as a nymph this could be good when i say size requirements what you're going to be aiming for with your mantis is i wouldn't go off the adult size and buy an enclosure based on that size uh if you're getting one a lot younger just because um if they're quite small and they're in like a large enclosure they're going to have trouble finding their food so i wouldn't just go purchasing um an enclosure straight off the bat for an adult female or male orchid mantis now the size between these two are quite vast. Now, females are a lot larger, yeah. around about eight centimeters in length, uh, whereas the males are like teeny weeny weeny. So this is one of the males. I've just popped him in this little tub so I can show you. Can you see how little he is? And then if I compare that then to Myra, so then this is your adult sized female orchid mantis against the size of the male. You see how little like, but it's crazy. So when buying an enclosure for your orchid mantis, you're just gonna wanna base it on the size that they're actually at when you have them. And you know, as they grow, you're gonna have to uh, upgrade to multiple sized enclosures. Not so much with the males as they do tend to stay quite small, but the females, like I've found she's had like quite a few upgrades throughout her life. Now, generally the accepted size for an enclosure for your mantis is based on the length of your mantis. So with Myra, so she's probably around about eight centimeters um, in length. And you're gonna want an enclosure that's like three times the length of the mantis. And then, I, this is really strange, but yeah, and twice the size going across. So you want to incorporate the like level of substrate that you have in your enclosure. Now that could be um, anything from paper towel to actual like coir fiber or coconut fiber substrate. You're gonna want to take that away from the length. because so obviously you're, you're taking away some of the height then that should be suited for your mantis. So yeah, it's generally three times up, twice across and obviously twice in depth as well. Now the reason being is um, they're gonna want a nice clean mold. So as I was saying about like the instar and everything, so like as they progress uh, after each mold, they get quite a bit larger each time. So you're gonna want to um, accommodate that with the size of your enclosure, which is why we say three times. So they hang on the top usually when they want to mold. And from there then they will like wiggle out of their exoskeleton and they'll they'll come through the exoskeleton. So you've got your exoskeleton, which is like one, and then you've got the mantis coming out, which is two. Um, your mantis is gonna be quite a bit bigger. So obviously you're gonna have to adjust 
for a little bit more than two when it's coming out and as it's coming out and then going back up you know that's why we say three four might be better but the general acceptance is like three so other than the deli cups i showed you like i said you could use the netted enclosure for an orchid mouse if you like but i would kind of steer away from that just because um their level of humidity and everything um it tends to be a lot more than you know your bog standard mantis that sometimes you can keep at room temperature so it's going to be quite difficult controlling your humidity levels with a netted enclosure however like your cross ventilation is going to be absolutely amazing so a bit of an upgrade from like a deli cup which is also another cheap option is one of these so i've just got a little layer of substrate there i tend to keep um kebab skewers in the enclosure i'll get onto why i do that when i come to the decorating and everything of your mantis enclosure but yeah i use one of these and they've got like these little lids you can just pick these up from ebay and they're like dirt cheap i've really messily cut this out but i'm going to show you so yeah i've just cut out like a hole from the top and added um some insect mesh now this is not a very fine insect mesh so i would have been better off using something like organza because I mean it's really cheap so i would definitely recommend using that but it also stops your fruit flies escaping if you're feeding fruit flies at that time this one i've got in here is my malaysian mantis that's recently um molted to adulthood he's doing just fine in there he doesn't eat like um fruit flies or anything so this material is pretty fine for that so he's on like green bottles and stuff and they're not going to be escaping through holes this small so that's like your cheaper end of the enclosures and everything which is absolutely fine but I've mentioned briefly about cross ventilation and with anything like that with plastic, you're better off um, popping a few holes just above the substrate level so you've got an airflow coming in and up out of the enclosure. Now, the reason being is um, mantids in general now, I just want to stress cross ventilation is massively, massively important for keeping a healthy mantis. It is imperative. There are people now that have recently gone into the mantis hobby, um, as I've said before, people who know everything um and they've started selling like lanterns and stuff on the side and they're doing these like diy enclosures but they're completely disregarding like an essential need for a mantis uh some people are giving the options of cross ventilation so you'll have a mesh top and you can have the option of having a mesh side i mean that's not an option like that is a necessity so yeah this is a basic care video i want to keep it like as understandable and as basic as i possibly can now a mantis obviously doesn't have the same circulatory system as you and i they don't have um, a pulmonary system they don't have lungs uh, so they're not going to be taking in deep breaths in deep breaths out no that's not how it works but a mantis has something called spiracles now this is a very very non-technical way of explaining it but they're basically pits or holes around the base of their body that um, are active in gas exchange now this gas exchange occurs with abdomen contraction and relaxation so drawing in oxygenated air and then passing out the waste gas so it's absolutely imperative that you've got that cross ventilation in any of your mantis enclosures because you want that air coming in through the side vents and up through the top you want to constantly circulate around that mantis body so it has a constant supply of fresh oxygenated air also you know with that airflow and everything it's going to help with any mold or um, deadly bacteria build up within the enclosure within the substrate and that's obviously going to be good for your overall mantids health so yeah please do not buy any enclosure of anyone who's diy making these enclosures that haven't put in a side ventilation and if they're just given the option of it just kindly let them know look it's not an option get your side mesh in so as we're on the topic of crazes there's also another craze in the mantis community which are these lanterns so yeah people are keeping mantis in lanterns i keep a mantis in a lantern guilty i'm all for this as long as it's used wisely so with these fancy lanterns and everything you're gonna want to take into consideration obviously your size requirements that needs to be a first secondly um you're going to want to make sure that there is going to be the ability to modify it so that you can get that cross ventilation so you don't want to be buying one of these lanterns with um like a solid top you want one that you could either remove the top and modify it with some insect mesh or one that's got like a hole built into it um you're going to want to cover any exit holes with um your organza or whatever and just hot glue that around the edges and that will serve it just fine so yeah i've got one of these lanterns now excuse the water marks on there but this is where myra has been living this is actually not where i would advise for your orchid or any mantis is having such a big structure in the middle we'll get onto that in a sec but yeah this is um 
what I've modified for her. So she's got the insect mesh on the back where I've taken one of the glass panels out. Now better again, take out another panel and just through the hole on the top. I don't know if you can see where she's climbing because they do like to hang from the top. Yeah, there's a hole and I've just covered that. So she's got that cross ventilation. So Myra is taking uh, flies that are much larger than um, fruit flies. So this insect mesh again is perfect for her. So some of my favorite enclosures now, I've got two types. So I've got a glass viv and I've got an acrylic uh, 3D printed enclosure. Now these are my favorites. You know, I'd love to have all of my mandids in these. Uh, hopefully I will soon, but I'm not doing this as some kind of big ad or anything. Like one of them was gifted to me from a company and, um, and the other one I did have a little bit of a discount on because I said, you know, I'm obviously going to include it in my mandis video, which is very kind of them but I wouldn't promote products or anything that I didn't actually think were great. So I'll get onto these now. So this is one of Mantis Den's um, 3D printed enclosures. Now we've got your top ventilation and you've got your side ventilation, which is on each side. Um, so yeah, brilliant. You've got your cross ventilation. That is absolutely amazing. And they've also started making them with these front opening doors. Now these are fab, especially if you've got a really nasty Mantis like this one. You've got little front opening door and inside your mantis now in my last video you would have seen this enclosure and it was lovely and it was bright and i had all these brand new plants and i'm really crap at keeping plants now i've started planting out my enclosures because i really like the look of them and everything but i definitely would steer away from doing this if you have no experience with mantis or you have only kept a couple um basically because you need to try and get the conditions right in it for the mantis as well as the plants which is quite difficult because obviously your plants need water and you don't want too much of a humid environment for certain animals but yeah these enclosures i'm really really impressed with they used to have top opening enclosures and i thought they were brilliant too but i really like the idea of having this you know drop down front opening especially for feeding and everything is so much less awkward and when you're dangling your hand in especially with a mantis that likes to attack you it, it get a bit scary <laughs> if you've got your tongs and all that you can just pop it in and shut the door back up and they're happy to be left on their own now um a point i wanted to make then with some of the decor is obviously i've planted these out i'm not going to be using like huge stem plants or anything like that with planting them out i wanted to use ones that were like literally floor level i don't really want them any higher than about about you because you don't want your mantis trying to molt from a very very low level I'll tell you she is this is my bud wing like she's my favorite she's the most feisty she hates me the most but i think that's why i love her she used to be the best one out of all of them like before she became an adult she was mammy's girl but now she can't stand me and she throws all these like gang signs and everything at me and like proper tries to attack me so i mean i think it's great but i've recorded this video three times and she's beaten the crap out of me three times like i'm not doing it again so this is one of their smaller enclosures now there is a size down and a size up um but yeah this is perfect for her she's not going to have another molt or anything so she's not going to be obstructed whilst having a molt and have any crumpled limbs or anything so she's doing just fine in here um and she's quite territorial she quite likes her little house so this is the size up so this is like 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters and this is perfect then for um an adult female orchid mantis I just want to apologize to um, Richie from Rich Rainforest. Like, he's a good buddy of mine and he sent me these plants at a massive discount. I promised I'd look after them and I've nearly killed them all off. I, I really can't keep plants. I've got an air plant up there that I've killed. An air plant. Who kills an air plant? So, yeah, this has got one of my giant Asian mantids in. Um, but, like I said, size wise and everything, this is perfect for an orchid mantis. They can easily climb up all the, all the sides. Um, you've got this mesh up the top. Like, you need to have that so they can hang for molting. And because this one's quite a bit larger and everything, and he's had most of his molds. I don't think there's going to be much issue with him trying to molt from any of these low lying plants here. Now, if you had a smaller like flower mantis or something, you don't really want to have plants this high in your enclosure. So the thing is, with these clean molds, as I was saying, you don't want too much decor within your enclosure. Now, you'll probably notice that mine are quite minimal. So I use these like kebab skewers um, and I'll put them vertical like this. Let me just pop him back. So yeah, with the kebab skewers now, and I tend to favor these a lot, you wanna just literally vertical like this, you want them hitting the roof of the enclosure. Now, I swear by these because you haven't got any bits jutting out of the sides or anything, you've got nothing obstructing a molt, because I've seen it where mantids, uh, especially with these, if they're not put completely vertical like this or any decor, and you've got an angle like this, your mantis could decide to molt from here, from here, from here. Now. 
as I said, they need the three times um, their length. Now, they're not utilizing the entire length of the enclosure if they're deciding to molt from here. And unfortunately, they're gonna end up hitting the substrate. They're gonna end up with like crumpled limbs. They're gonna have like a crumpled thorax or something. This has actually happened uh, to my Peruvian leaf mantis. Uh, this happened due to her falling because I didn't have anything obstructing, but the same can happen there. They can have crumbled limbs, they can end up dying. You know, the exoskeleton is very, very, very soft when they've come out of a fresh molt. If they start molting from here, they're easily gonna start hitting the ground, hitting branches or wherever. So try and keep your enclosure decoration wise to um, a minimum. So I mean, um, in like the small deli cups, you can use lollipop sticks. Um, you can use like these vines and stuff that you can get like reptile vine. Um, but yeah, I would definitely suggest vertical um, just to make sure you haven't got the chance of the mantis molting and having a bad molt. So yeah, like I said, with Myra's enclosure now, she's got a big orchid plant in there now. She's not going to be molting again, so that's fine. Um, I tend to keep it very bare otherwise. Now, this is something where I see a lot of TikTokers, they're using inadequate enclosures in themselves, but they're over decorating them, they're cluttering them up. Like the more clutter, the worse it is for your mantis. Like there is so many options for them to molt lower down and everything. So just try and keep it to a bare minimum. Now, um, moving on to like the more expensive end of the scale now, um, you've got your vivariums, your glass enclosures. This would be fine for an orchid mantis. And this particularly, this is like the same size as the one I showed you from Mantis Den, but this one is from Komodo products. Now I've used Komodo products for quite a while when I was in the reptile hobby. So I was really excited when they decided to send me one of their vibs to try out for my mantis. And I've definitely not been disappointed. Now, this is another poorly planted <laughs> out enclosure with my lovely dying Photonia. And this is housing one of my adult giant Asian mantises. Now, this is another feisty one. He's suddenly turned since becoming an adult. So he's not into being picked up as much anymore. But yeah, this is one of the enclosures then that they sent me. Again, we've got a front opening enclosure and on the top, you've got a nice sturdy lid. Now you've got your cross ventilation here. So you've got your ventilation coming through here and you've got your ventilation coming through the top. So that yeah, again, this is perfect for an orchid mantis, especially an adult female. And now that he's become an adult, like I've done with my other mantids, I tend to go for a more planted out enclosure just because I know they're not gonna be molting again and there's not going to be that risk of them having crumpled limbs or anything. So he's got a nice bit of cover in there and he likes to hang from all these little bits. But again, I've still got the kebab skewers in there just so that he can get the top easily. Now with that enclosure, you've got like a top opening and a side opening, which is absolutely fab, you know, either way. If you're a difficult mantis, you know, it's nice to have options. So from like cheapest to most expensive, let's say, even though in this hobby, it's not very expensive anyway, you've got your deli cups that I showed you and then you can upgrade then to like one of them sweetie jar type things and then from there you can have a lantern if you modify it correctly and then you've got one of them pop-up little tent enclosure things that i've shown you you can get them in a couple of sizes um not particularly great for an orchid mantis if you can't get the humidity right but still an option and then you've got your nice fancy enclosures that i absolutely love which is your acrylic enclosures from like mantis den and then you've got like your viv that i showed you that i've got from komodo and like for a glass vivarium it's quite light and everything so you're not like lugging things around as if you would with a reptile they are quite small enclosures they're perfect for mantis they do a couple of different sizes as well so if you've got your smaller species of mantids then you can opt for a smaller one i mean one day i might like decide to keep them all in the same thing i do like them being all different and stuff but um it's a nice variety because you've got your cheap options you've got your expensive options like there is so many options when it comes to making an enclosure you're also going to get your bad enclosures so i don't really want to offend anyone that's actually keeping their mantis in one of these enclosures but they're really really not recommended so do you know mason jars these tiktokers in particular are keeping them in mason jars they're putting a bit of mesh over the top and they're just cluttering the hell out of them with these fake plants so if you need like a humid environment or something like for an orchid mantis then you might think oh that's great it's going to hold in the moisture and everything you know it's mantis is going to be fine but no you can make an enclosure way too wet for a mantis and that can cause mold bacteria buildup it can be really detrimental to the health of your mantis so it actually has the opposite effect it holds in too much water it's a glass jar at the end of the day like it's gonna hold water if you've got one of these enclosures and you swear by them like at least try and apply that cross ventilation like drilling holes along the side i mean you're drilling holes in the glass then though so i think it kind of defeats the object of a nice easy setup and everything like 
I don't know many people that are gonna go through the effort of doing that um, just to convert a mason jar into an enclosure. I think a lot of people are doing it for the aesthetic and everything, just like they're buying these orchid mats, it's purely on aesthetic reasons. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you want a fancy ornament or something in your house, uh, something pretty, then go get yourself a fancy ornament, but don't put a living animal in there, okay? If you want to use one of these mason jars and chuck a little toy orchid mantis in there, then go ahead. But really, please try and steer away from these um, mason jars and stuff. I'm sure someone will pop up in my comments and be like, oh, there's nothing wrong with mason jars. But <laughs> I haven't done my research on this, but um, I'm sure someone will gladly pop up in my comments and try and correct me. Um, but yeah curvature of these mason jars and everything now there's um research and stuff into same with better fish um keeping them in bowls I, I kept mine in quite a large bowl like it was something like 22 liters or something which is plenty for a better fish then people still had this opinion that the curvature and everything can affect their eyesight some people have said this about the mandids as well Personally, I don't think there's enough research out there to justify one way or the other. But seeing as you've got like these really cheap options of your deli cups and your sweetie jars and stuff like that, which are easily modified, then I don't see why you would go straight as your first port of call to a mason jar as an enclosure, unless it is just for aesthetic reasons. You know, you're gonna have to put a lot of effort into actually like drilling holes and bar and everything and making it suitable for a mantis. So just, I stay away from them.